we're back here at CPAC. Joining me right now is Michael Loftus. You're one of my favorite, most. You're very funny, kind here. Funny. How much is it? Gonna, how much is this going to cost me? I'm not. I'm not. That's easily twenty. Okay, drinks <laughs> at the bar. How are you? I'm having a blast. This is. I always love CPAC. It's just great to be uh, surrounded with like like-minded people. Even though you know they disagree on policy and everybody has their own favorite speaker. Yeah. It's like we're just having a blast. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You know, it's like yeah. being a Republican in Los Angeles. <laughs> you have to be crazy. Like I voted for Trump, and they're like, "You're killing me." That's a that's a thought crime. Well, tell me a little bit about your thoughts on comedy and the way that comedians have been restrained during these past couple of years. It's been a really difficult time. It has been, and, and here's. I noticed this a, a, a while ago. When all of the late night hosts started having the same political background, like, you know, Fallon's a Democrat. It, so they're all looking at this, the jokes and current event through the same lenses. You know, the same, and it's just too much politics. And that makes the comedies predictable. You know exactly where they're going, right? And that's why I think Greg Gutfeld is doing so well that there's an unpredictability to it, you know? And, and he's a wing nut. You never know exactly what's going to come flying out of that guy's mouth. So that's why he's number one. But and, it, it's blown me away with Greg because he is beating all three networks. And right? You're talking soon, soon it'll be, you'll be able to combine all three and he'll <laughs> still... That's the wonderful thing that, like, Americans don't realize and hopefully CPAC and events like this help them. We, we are the small business owners. We are the majority. We do make the wheel turn. We are, we are the people. And everybody, you know, we're also very busy. We're working hard. We're paying our bills. We're making sure our kids aren't, you know, in some woke school. And every once in a while, and I don't think it's too late, but, like, the common sense people who know that none of this is right, none of this is right, they're, gonna, they're, they're waking up and they're like, all right, enough's enough. I really feel over the past couple of months, with even during Greg's show, there's been a kind of like a sigh of relief where it's like, yeah, comedy was like in the depths of like despair where nobody could say anything. And then slowly it's, it's like funny. there's air coming in the room. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that during COVID and the lockdown, uh, I did my second one hour special and it, this one was for Fox Nation. They're like, if, hey, if you want to try it, we'll do it. We've never, so I'm like, absolutely. So we went to Nashville and sold out the show and safety, yada, yada, yada. But there's something that's a lot of fun on being an outsider, right? When, when everybody's going one direction and you're standing your ground, your head hits the pillow great. And the people are like, I can't believe he said that. And so now other comedians, they're getting jealous, you know? So they're going to start popping off, you know, because... You, you say a lot of things in Hollywood to get by, you know, and be accepted, but inside you're, it's driving you crazy. And so now people are uh, finding their cojones, shall we say. I'll put it nicely. I like that. Well, I appreciate you for keeping, I keep, you. keeping your cojones <laughs> during this time. And that's so crazy because I handed you a 20 and you gave me a five back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Great to talk I with you. I appreciate it. Take care.